Hey, this is Chrono AB, and in this video, we'll be making a beginner level procedural generating terrain in Unity 2D. We'll be making two types of terrain. The first one looks like this, and the second one looks like this. So, without any further ado, let's just get started. So, first of all, in Unity, let's create a tile. Then drag and drop it in the hierarchy, change its name to dirt and change its color to dirt as well. After that, let's make a prefab out of it. Now in the hierarchy, let's create a game object by pressing Ctrl, Shift and N. This creates a new game object. Then rename it to procedural generation and let's add a script which is also called procedural generation. Now open that script in Visual Studio. Now let's make an int variable called width and a game object called dirt. After that, let's make our own function called generation. Then make a reference to this function in the start function. Now let's make a for loop which will loop until x is equal to width. And inside this loop, we'll instantiate the dirt game object with a position of new vector 2 in which x axis will be x and y axis will be 0 and it will not have any rotation. Now this for loop will help us spawn block on the x axis until the x value will be equal to the width which we will set up in the inspector. Now with that said, let's hit save and back in Unity, let's give it some width value, drag and drop the tile, dirt tile by the way, and when we hit play, you can see we have spawned different blocks according to the x value. Now back in Visual Studio, let's do the same thing for y-axis, so let's have another int value called height. Then inside this for loop, let's make another for loop which will loop until y is equal to height. After that, cut this line of code and paste it here. Then in the y-axis, instead of 0, write y. As I said before, this for loop will spawn a tile on the y-axis. Now back in Unity, let's give it some height value. And when we hit play, you can see that we spawn a block according to the width as well as the height. Now let's add another tile which will be a grass tile on top of our dirt tile. So in the game object, add a grass game object. Now this for loop will go until y is less than height value. So let's spawn our grass on the height value. So instantiate a grass on new vector 2 x for the x-axis and height for the y-axis and with no rotation. Now let's save this, go back to Unity and first of all let's create our grass tile. Then drag and drop it here. Okay now let's hit play. And as you can see grasses are spawning on top of our dirt tile. Now we are able to spawn objects, but as you can see here, the hierarchy is really cluttered. So let's fix that first. And we can do that by making these tiles into a child of our procedural generation game object. So back in Visual Studio, let's make a function called spawn object, which spawns a game object called object obj with two integers called width and height. Now inside that function write object is equal to instantiate our object with new vector 2 which will be our width and height value and with quaternion.identity meaning no rotation. And then write object.transform.parent is equal to this.transform. So with this function whatever we spawn will be a child of our procedural generation game object. Now let's call this function here and for the game object write dirt and for the width and height value write x comma y. Then remove this line of code because we don't need it. And let's call this function here as well and put grass for game object and put x comma height for the position. After that save it and in unity hit play and as you can see the hierarchy is not cluttered anymore. So now let's add a basic form of procedural generation. 
To do that, we need to gradually increase and decrease the height value. So write int min height is equal to height minus 1 and int max height is equal to height plus 2. After that, down here write height is equal to random dot range min height comma max height. Now what's going on here is that let's say our height is 30. Then the minimum height will be a 30 minus 1, 29 and the maximum height will be 30 plus 2, 32. Now we take a random value from 39 to 31 because the random dot range will not take the last value which is equal to 32. Now because of that we only have three different height values to choose from and let's say the first time it chose 29. That means the new height will be 29 and it will spawn 29 different blocks and then the loop will go again and now the random dot range will choose from 28, 29 and 30 as per the calculation. So the random dot range can choose only one height above, below or the same height as the previous block height, which will give us a gradual increase and decrease in the height value, giving us a procedural generation. So let's hit save and then in Unity change the value as you like of the height value and hit play and as you can see now there is a gradual increase and decrease which gives us procedural generation. Now let's add one more tile called stone. And down here write int minimum stone spawn distance is equal to height minus 5 and int maximum stone spawn distance is equal to height plus 3. And now the total stone spawn distance will be equal to random dot range, the minimum stone spawn distance, comma maximum stone spawn distance. Now in this for loop, write if y is less than total stone spawn distance, then spawn our game object, which will be stone on x comma y value. Else, and in here, just cut and paste this line of code. Then save it and in Unity first make a stone prefab. And then drag it here. And when you hit play, you can see it spawns the stone block below our dirt according to the total spawn value. Now if you want to change the minimum and maximum stone spawn distance value from the inspector then let's make two integers on the top called minimum stone height and maximum stone height. And then replace 5 with minimum stone height and 6 with maximum stone height. Let's save it and let's set up the maximum and minimum value and as you can see there is a bit more randomness while we are spawning stone. Now if you put minimum stone height as zero, it will spawn stones at the top as well. And if you want to spawn rocks in place of grass as well, then back in Unity here, write if total stone spawn distance is equal to height, then just copy this stone spawning function and paste it here. And instead of y, write height. Then in this else function, just copy this line of code. Then back in Unity, hit play, and now you can see stone spawn in the place of grass as well. So this is all for the first type of procedural generation. The link is in the description if you want to copy the code. Now let's make the second one. Now I have a game object called platform generation as well as a script which is also called platform generation. Let's open it on Visual Studio and then copy everything from the procedural generation script to this script. Then after that, let's remove every line of code that is related to the stone game on.
play, you can see that it gives us a totally random height value here. Now, if we actually repeat this random value a certain amount of time, then we can get a platform-like structure. So in Visual Studio, let's create a function called Generate Flat Platform. And inside this function, just copy this line of code. After that, we have an x value to write here. So let's write integer x here. Now in our generation function, we will add an int called repeat value, which will be zero. Then in this for loop, write if repeat value is equal to zero, and inside the curly bracket, cut and paste this line of code. Then make repeat value equal to repeat number, which we will set up in the inspector. After that, write else and inside the curly bracket, write generate flat platform and repeat minus minus. So what's going to happen here is that first of all, repeat value is equal to zero. So it will give us a random height and spawn platform according to that random height. Then our repeat value will be equal to repeat number. Let's say it is five. Now it will keep on spawning platform at that random height until repeat value will be equal to zero. Once it is zero, again, it will give us another random height value and then start spawning according to that random height value and repeat will be back to repeat number, which in our case is five. So by doing that, it will keep on spawning platform. So let's save this, go back to Unity, let's give it some amount of repeat value. And when you hit play, you can see it generates platform with random height. So with that said, this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you like it. If you did like it, smash the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to never miss the latest video. Both of the code are in the link in the description. If you want to download it, you can go there. This is a beginning level video, so there was no things where like pearly noise to have a more smooth kind of a randomness, as well as the code is not that efficient at doing things. So in the next video, we'll do the same thing make procedural generating terrain with our tile map and by using some Perlin noise. So with that said, stay tuned and bye bye.